Hello fellow subjective artist drankers, I have found an absurd article which claims to have ranked 31 incredible painters. Today we will be classifying all of them in the greatest artist ranking ever made. Please take this video extremely seriously. Let us begin. Our first contender is the highly controversial Jackson Pollock, known for getting expelled twice from high school. But Pollock was a genius artist who invented a whole new way of painting with his so-called action paintings. Just look at the pa wait a second, this is not Pollock. All these belong to Janet Sobel, the artist from whom Pollock stole his entire style from. By the way, did you know he was such an alcoholic that he had a drunk driving accident which ended up with him and an innocent woman dead? Estir Roy Lichtenstein I love this idea of comics as fine art. But who cares what I think? Let's ask the greatest minds of our generation. The live chat of lo-fi hip-hop beats to relax as I study to. Hey, what do you guys think of Roy Lichtenstein? At everyone, find the position of center of mass of a system of four parts. I'm not naked. Anyone want to join Zoom, lol? Articles of masses. 1 kilogram, 2 kilograms, 3 kilograms. I can do the splits. Is that hard enough for you? What? What is happening? 4 kilograms. Placed at the vertices of a square of side 1 meter. And after all these hours I've spent in this room today, <laughs> I, st I still couldn't find out why so many people want Andrew Tate to be free. <laughs> what does that have to do with it? Take any particle at origin. Well, this is getting nowhere, for the cardinal sin of putting giant text on paintings and for the slightly lesser sin of cheating on his wife with a 22 year old when he was 68. C tier. Mark Rothko, the most creative titler of our generation, with such incredible names as Orange and Yellow. And this one, Orange, Red and Yellow. How about this? Number 14. Try to guess this one. That's right. It's untitled. Rothko thought describing his art was futile and silence while looking at his works was for the best. I must agree, it's impossible to describe what I see and feel. But for his landscape of the moon, D tier. Andy Warhol, the king of pop art. I adore his paintings that repeat on and on. But one aspect of Warhol that is overlooked is his films. Like Empire, a film which entirely consists of views of the Empire State Building. The film is 8 hours long. How about Eat, which just shows a guy eating. For his subversive masterpiece, Sleep, we put him in A tier. Grant Wood is largely known for a single painting, which is kinda sad. His other works are to me even more engaging. His style makes everything look like tiny toy model sets. You can also see a bit of Surratt's pointillism in his trees. Overall a solid painter. B tier. Diego Rivera. Husband of Frida Kahlo. I want to tell a story about this guy. He was commissioned by Rockefeller to paint a mural and he did but in the mural He also added a portrait of Lenin. He was of course told to remove it, but he refused So the state of Chicago Cancelled their commission for him in response. What did Rivera do? He issued a press statement and said he would use Rockefeller's money to keep painting the same mural over and over anytime he was asked to do so he was ordered to leave the US. Esti. Vasily Kandinsky. This is the guy. This is the man who pioneered abstract art. When you go to any modern art museum, Kandinsky's soul is there. His abstract work. Uh, wait a second, this is not Kandinsky. This is Hilma of Klint, the true first abstract painter. This is the second time in this video that a woman's invention has been repressed by art historians and attributed to a man. Oh, and Kandinsky's art is just bad. C tier. Frida Kahlo. I've heard people say that when they look at their favorite paintings, they see an underlying beauty. In Kahlo's work, there is an underlying ugliness. Everything from the colors to the forms feels repugnant. I almost want to like Marxism will give help to the sick, but I can't. The other surrealists simply outshine her in technique and creativity. C tier. James Whistler, even though many think his painting of his mother is his greatest work, I prefer his more experimental nocturne pieces. Sadly, Whistler was a very sensitive man and sued an art critic for disliking his work. The case bankrupted Whistler, defeated by his own hubris. He got back on his feet though. 80. Georgie O'Keeffe 
To turn a thousand-year-old cliché of drawing flowers into something entirely new is very admirable. I know the controversy regarding her art, people think it looks like… well, you know. Still, her works are a joy to gaze at. Strong B-tier. Georges-Pierre Seurat, the man who invented a whole new technique of drawing. All works done in pointillism derive from this one man. He absolutely mastered color theory. A-tier. I apologize for just skimming over these very important artists, but I do not want to edit a 30 minute video. Like I said before, I'm a very lazy man. Rene Magritte. I must admit, I am very biased about Magritte. I believe him to be the greatest surrealist painter, but who cares what I think? Let's ask the worst minds of our generation. Reddit. I spent like $60 on a book of his work and now I can't find it. Hilarious. Never a fan. Every time I see pictures like this, I think of this guy I used to have a crush on in high school because it was his default picture. Brent, if you're reading this, sup. Hello, Emily. Well, this is going nowhere. Magritte is so good though. A tier. Henri Matisse, the first fauviste, fauve meaning wild animal in French. Le fauve painted with very bright colors and visible brush strokes. Also, you know that corporate art style, Allegria, that people hate? Well, Matisse was drawing like that in the 1900s. Upper C tier. Edward Munch known for one transcendent masterpiece in western art young man and prospect also he painted this i think b tier gustav klimt his gold period work is so unique you will never see a painting that even resembles a klimt he was very much so inspired by japanese art and you can see that in his works which have a tint of art nouveau a tier edgar degas boy this is a good one he liked to draw young women doing ballet of course this was seen as weird so, he switched to drawing young women baiting. He hated being called an impressionist, and even more so, he despised people who worked on plein air, meaning people who drew outside. He once said, You know what I think of people who work out in the open? If I were the government, I would have a special brigade of gendarmes to keep an eye on artists who paint landscapes from nature. Oh, I don't mean to kill anyone, just a little dose of birdshot now and then as a warning. Oh, also he was a raging anti-Semite. D tier. Paul Cezanne the pioneer of modern art. This man is the reason why all modern works look the way they do. He's the sort of branching point. Matisse called him a god of painting, Monet said he was the greatest, and Picasso said he was the father of all of them. Estier. Edouard Manet, a man so bored of painting realism that he just stumbled into Impressionism. In a more serious sense, you can see the shift in art in this era solely through Manet's works. A nice B tier. Peter Paul Rubin. When people think of high art and gigantic paintings from a period when artists actually had time to draw such things, they think of Rubin. Perhaps the most well-known Baroque artist. Something his paintings are sometimes a bit too crowded and confusing, and I must agree, but once you digest it piece by piece, you start to see his genius. Top A tier. Renoir, an impressionist who focused more on portraits to make a living. Since his works are mostly just other real people of his time, you don't get to see a lot of Renoir's personality in his paintings. To be more precise, they lack a certain soul and interesting subjects. There is no self-expressionist intent here, only repetitive drawings of people. Love City. Velázquez. If some artists are known for their use of color and some are known for their technique, then Velázquez should be known for his inhuman texture and rendering skill. The water cellar of Seville has been my phone background for around 3 years now and I don't plan on changing it. Small nitpick, I hate it when people see the mirror in Las Meninas and think, wow, he painted the other side of the canvas, such a genius detail. Bro, John Van Eyck did it 200 years before him. It's nothing new. Still an easy A. Salvador Dali, perhaps. The ultimate troll. I could make an entire video on just this guy. He is at times a communist, sometimes a fascist, sometimes he hates monarchy, and when the king visits him, he says he's always been a monarchist. He wrote a letter supporting slavery just to chop his friend Beton. He once said he was against freedom and later flew to the United States. He's the creator of such masterpieces like the Chupa Chops logo. That's really gonna cut up. His works are such visual joys to look at. By the way, did you know he committed assault on some random girl and he beat his wife? S tier. Raphael. 
many artists mastered painting animals and got exceptionally good at rendering fur and skin. Even today, many of these works and studies depicting animals hold up as important cornerstones of art. And then you have Raphael's dolphins. Just for that, D2. Picasso, his cubist works were seen as revolutionary and it's not hard to see why. Here's the kiss by Edward Munch. Here's the kiss by Gustav Klimt. And here's the kiss by Picasso. Sadly, outside of art circles, most see his art as ugly and lazy. I'd like to try and explain why that isn't the case, but this is not a Pablo Picasso video. I'm saving that for later. Upon much thought, B2. Monet, the first impressionist, is Monet. The best impressionist is Monet. The banner of this channel is a Monet. The man who taught me French was named Monet, which has nothing to do with this, but we don't believe in coincidences here. Estia. Johannes Vermeer, outside of this ultra-famous portrait, I would describe his art as woman to the right of the painting, object to the left of the painting, woman on the right, object on the left, 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 woman on the right, object on the left. When you've seen one Vermeer, you've seen every Vermeer. See you. Leonardo da Vinci, here we are. There's so much to say about this one man that I'll just tell you a small fun fact. In 1476, da Vinci got accused of being um, roommates with men, but due to a lack of evidence, he thankfully beat the bottom allegations. A tier. Caravaggio, the master of contrast, and perhaps alongside Bernini, who somehow isn't even on this list, influenced Baroque art the most. His paintings are violent and beautiful and most importantly, alive. Such a key artist in the history of art. By the way, did you know he was a murderer? He straight up murdered someone? Esther. Rembrandt. I had an art teacher who was in love with this guy and it's not hard to see why. He was very handsome. He was most likely the best painter of his era and many believe he is the single best painter to have ever lived. It is crucial that you see a Rembrandt in real life and see the texture of the paint up close. That's when most truly get it. Strong A. Michelangelo. I can't even make a joke here. He is simply one of the most skilled artists to have ever lived. The Sistine Chapel is absurd in quality. Look at this. Now, the figures are impressive, right? But it becomes even more mad when you realize the entire support structure, all that marble, is just paint. None of it is real. The ceiling is just one gigantic painting. I don't even know what to say. Esther. Van Gogh. Van Gogh is Esther. There is no argument. So I'll just leave you with this. The Red Vineyard. The only painting Vincent ever sold. For how much? 400 francs. And that's it the complete greatest artist tier list. Like I said, this video should be taken extremely seriously. And if you are still watching, then why not subscribe? You lose nothing. I'd like to thank everyone who showed me support on the last video. Once again, thanks for tuning into Polyblank and I'll see you later.